Uh, there's no contest for this episode, but hopefully there will be in future episodes. And now we're going to go up to the final segment, which is real to real players. So in front of you, we have a couple of tape reels here. Uh, a couple of them are blank, such as these two. And uh, if you open them up here, you have a 7-inch reel, which uses quarter-inch magnetic tape. Now, uh, the packaging here, there's some tips for making better recordings. If we move on to some of the you know, commercial stuff, we have reels like this, some more blank tape, and uh, you can see one here for Martin Denny's Golden Greats. And uh, if you look in the upper corner here, you can see that it says 7.5 IPS. IPS stands for inches per second. So all these tapes had different sound quality depending on inches per second. Kind of like how if you have you know, a VHS tape, you can do EP, SP, SLP recordings, stuff like that. Um, 7.5 inches per second was probably the highest quality for home recordings and the lowest quality for professional recordings. Professional recording usually used 15 inches per second or higher, and they had uh, 10 inch reels instead of these 7 inch reels, and they had wider hubs in the middle. But uh, for home recording, the highest quality was 7.5 IPS, and then you could also have, I believe, 3.5 IPS and 1.25 and IPS. And if you record something on 1.25 IPS, you could probably have a reel going like all day with sound. It's not very good sound, but you can have a lot of stuff going on. And now, pushing these to the side, show you this recorder right here. And uh, this is a Concord reel to reel machine. And uh, this is probably used in schools or basically non professional use, maybe someone recording themselves singing, something like that. Over here, you have tape speed. Down here, there's a knob, you have volume, you have tone, and then if you look here, these kind of piano key buttons down at the bottom, which has play, fast forward, stop. It also has uh, cue and record buttons, so I'm guessing this has a built in microphone. And this also has a built in speaker. The problem is, the speaker isn't really reliable, so I would show that off, but it would just cause more problems than it's worth. And I'll show you another reel to reel machine next. Move this one aside. So this is a Tandberg reel-to-reel -reel machine. Uh, this is probably pretty good for home use. This might be a top-of-the-line model. Tandberg is actually still around. They do uh, like intercom devices, stuff like that. And uh, showing off this machine, up here you have a switch which controls tape speed. Let's zoom in on that. So you have one and a quarter, it's three and three fourths, and seven and a half inches. So, that's how many inches per second you could have there. Move down into this corner, you have your on switch, your record button, you have your input levels if you want to input using. And here you can see microphones, or there's a line in the back, which I'll show you. And then you have these two red buttons, which are record select for left and right channels. You have a headphone jack. You have an S on S jack. I'm not sure what that does. I just leave it on normal. And you have your source, for your tape. So you can, if you choose to have them out, then that's your source. That's the auxiliary in on the back. If you press them down, that just plays from the tape. And then. Up here you have your tape counter up top, and your fast forward, and your play buttons, and your rewind buttons, stuff like that. I'll show you. And you're just going, that way would be rewind, that's play, and this is stop. I don't know why you have your free button here, you can just use that for stop. And then if you look over here under the B, there's a little switch back and forth. That does start and stop as well kind of an interesting design why they would choose to do it there and uh, I'm going to show you how to load a tape on this. Most times when you have a reel to reel you'd get an empty reel kind of like this one. This isn't officially an empty reel. It looks like somebody took something and they cut it out 
so it can be used as an empty reel. This isn't too good, but I'm going to use it just because it's on here right now. Now, if you remember earlier, the Golden Greats Martin Denny. Now, I'll show you how to load this one real quick. You might notice here, let me zoom in for a second. You have these black locks that are on top of these sort of silver locks. They both basically look the same. Now, if I put a reel on, make sure the tape's facing the right way. Now that slides in right there. Now you take this black part, you pull it out, and you twist it. So that way it locks in, you can't pull the reel out. See that? Okay, now I have my reel in here. Now, there's some hanging off here a little bit. And then just take that, and get a little bit, feed it through the middle. Then up in here. Since this isn't a right reel, I kind of have to mess with it a little. I'm going to hold it here at the top. And then I'm going to turn it so that it locks it in a bit. And now I need to lock this reel. Let me give it a couple more turns. Make sure it works all right. That seems to be working. Now let me show you the back real quick. Now on the back here, down at the bottom, you have, right here is your line in, and this uses, you know, your standard RCA jacks, and this is your line out. Now what I'm going to be doing is, I have just some standard, you know, RCA cable that you'd find with a stereo, and I'm going to hook that up to the line out. Now you might be hearing a little bit of static because of what I'm going to show you next. Now, turn this machine back around. So we have that that's ready to go. Let me turn that on. And over here, so here's a Helix boombox. Now, if you want me to do a segment on boomboxes, I will. Um, I'm not really going to cover it in this episode. This was a pretty good top of the line boombox at its time. On the back, it has a uh, line in for auxiliary and for phono, so you could even hook a record player up to this. But right now, I'm just using it for the line in. And uh, as you can see, lights on, which means it's on. And now, if I should do the play button here, let me make sure the tape is chosen, yep. Then this should play this tape. I'm not sure if it will because it's been having some problems, but let's give it a try. Okay, so as you can see, it plays the tape pretty well. Um, now the top here, 